Hey everybody, it's Bob here and welcome to another Making Stuff video. Today I've got a special video for you guys. I am busy welding up a future project you're going to see on Making Stuff. So Russ has been kind enough over at RWG Research. He is going to take over and he's going to show you what he's been working on over at his channel. He's been doing some really cool stuff over there with his 3D printer and he is making circuit boards right now with a 3D printer. And of course he has made a circuit board for the open extruder project and he's going to show that to you right now. So take it away Russ. What's up everybody? My name's Russ with rwgresearch.com and today we're going to be making this circuit board on this homemade contraption. So this is what I call the RWG OSD. I've been documenting it very thoroughly and building the whole thing from scratch including the CNC custom parts and everything. So this is the first circuit board I've ever made from start to finish drilling holes and cutting it out on this machine. So I hope you enjoy and uh, that's all I got. Enjoy. Alright so we've taken this file, made the traces from the schematic and we exported that so into FlatCam and we've generated the necessary g-code all uh, 45,000 lines of it, edited what we needed and we have put it on the printer well it kind of is a printer <laughs> and we are ready to start cutting so I probed it I got our height map here so you can see what that looks like it looks like uh, this side's a little low but um, we're gonna have to just hope that it is doing its job in leveling the bed so I still don't trust it 100% but that's okay alright so um, I got the cutter in here V tipped 30 degree angled cutter and I'm gonna time lapse it so let's hope it works just finished. So it appears that I didn't have the bit quite deep enough and it gives these little these little burrs right here and that's just due to the fact that I ran uh, I ran the bit twice so that I could make a, a thicker trace. I have different tools but I was gonna try this method first and as you can see that works fine but the tool wasn't quite deep enough and I didn't have it worked out just perfect but it works. The other thing is as you might notice I actually had the board the wrong way, so my axes were turned on me and I didn't realize it, but whatever, it's good. So now, let's try to drill this thing. So using the exact same method, by the way, I'm using um, dip trace for laying this out. This is the first time I've ever used it. Uh, it's pretty good. There's pros and cons of all of it, right? So I exported that, imported it into what I'm using as flat cam, and just have the holes only these little dots, okay, and then uh, exported that, went in here and edited the, um, the G-code and added in some other things 
uh, uploaded it to the duet and now we are going to attempt to do that. So I have um, different types of drill bits here. So let's give that a shot. Hopefully nothing fails and everything works out for us. Oh, I guess that's all of them. Only four holes for those. So the vacuum system actually is working really, really well. Um, the hole on the top's messing me up, so let's figure something else out for that. But hey, uh, yep, now we're gonna do a cut cutout, the board cutout. I have no idea if it's gonna work. First time for this. All right, same method as before. Software, flat gam, and now to the print door, or CNC in my case. So let's give it a shot. Hopefully all goes well. I got a 0.1 millimeter, no, a two millimeter, no, I'm sorry, a one millimeter um, burr type cutter here to cut the edge of the uh, circuit board off. So I have no idea if this is gonna work. I have no idea if this is gonna work. But, I think it will. All right, it's done. And here's the best part about this contraption that I built. Let me show you. This vacuum cleaner is actually a portable vac. So now I can clean up the little bit of mess I got on the table. Pretty sweet, right? Okay, this is officially the first circuit board that I've completed on this, so you guys are lucky to see it. I cut the last bit way too fast, so there's some debris in these holes. I cut it the correct speed over here. So let's pop this board off and uh, get ourselves a better look at it. Ah, double-sided sticky tape works really well. Okay, well it turned out really, really well. The holes drilled all the way through and look perfectly clean. So now what we're actually gonna do is just pull off these little strands. You can see them on there, they, they, they pull off. That was due to the depth not being just right. So we'll pull all those off and this'll look a little bit better. Oh, that was a bad idea. I used a razor blade to, to finish after I pulled all those traces off. And although that's not a problem, I, I scratched it up. But yeah, there's the finished circuit board. Not bad on a homemade piece of equipment. I didn't clean out all the stuff down here, but not bad at all. Now it's time to do some soldering. Welcome back. So I'm at my home location of where I work. So this is the facility, this is the space. It looks pretty big, but let me show you a perspective that you'll actually understand. This is my chair, okay? This is a regular size chair. I can sit in it. So this space looks nice. However, let me show you from this angle. Now you can see exactly how much space is, is actually in here, and it's pretty small. So from this angle, it's even smaller. All right, so let me show you what I did. I got the circuit board all cleaned out. I used a brass wire brush, cleaned it up a lot better, and it looks much, much better. So now we're going to assemble this thing. 
And of course, it'll all be time lapse. So, got my soldering station right there. And uh, yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna have to hodgepodge some of this together from my old circuitry and pieces and stuff. Wow, okay, it is currently almost one o'clock in the morning. I did start this project today, and this is what we got. I do not have the terminal blocks, they're all somewhere else. So, in the meantime, I will just solder directly to the board. Um, so, I've got the board made up, and I've soldered everything to it. The only thing missing is uh, the header pins here, and if you're wondering what these spaces are for, I designed this circuit board so you could cut it right here and you could put header pins on the front side of this and then you could take the LCD and the push button and the LEDs you could take just this and put it on the front of your unit and this can all be in the back side so anyway I've got different regulators on here so I'm gonna test those real quick before I connect the calipers now in case you're wondering if you watch the time-lapse I was able to get the soldering iron in through the top, as you can see, you can see down in there. And I put a little bit of solder on those pads and then um, taped the wires so that they held their position and slid them in there and just soldered them from the soldering iron this way, seeing what I was doing this way. That actually worked really well. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cake the whole thing with some hot glue right there and put everything back together. And that way you won't, you can't really tell what's going on. Now, Bob actually 3D printed, as you guys know, the little adapter to put in here, which is pretty cool. But I just wanted to solder it on there instead. Okay, let's finish this and test the voltages output. Make sure that's correct. Hook this up. Download the program to the Teensy and give it a go. Awesome. Okay, so I want to show you a quick problem. For the low voltage 1.5 volt regulator, I am actually using an LM1084. And it so happens that when you turn it on, this happens. So looking at the spec sheet, apparently you're supposed to add a um, 50 UF uh, aluminum capacitor or a 10 UF Talulum. Okay, it's all stable, it's working. Now, the Teensy is not programmed, so we gotta do that real quick. But yes, indeed, we have a working circuit board. Perfect. This is good. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can program this thing. Oh, you guys are gonna love this. So, I got this far. It is 2.20 in the morning. I got this far, and I'm supposed to reset the Teensy by pushing this button. So I did that, and I couldn't get anything working. It drove me nuts. So I spent like a good half an hour to find out this cable doesn't have data pins in it. Why do they make cables like this that don't have the data pins? It drives me nuts. I've had this problem many a times before. I should have figured it out sooner. Anyway, we're almost there. All right, well, it's almost 2.30 in the morning. We successfully built this thing. Unfortunately, the LCD screen is a single liner, but I got a surprise for you. This is the LED for the alarm, and I happen to have LEDs that have built-in flashings. So this is the alarm reset, and when I hit it, look at that. How fancy is that? That's built in. All you gotta do is apply power and then it flickers to different colors. Pretty cool. Um, 
yeah so everything functions everything's worked apparently the program is downloaded because this is working uh, and I was really hoping to get my first couple of steps out of it but I can't do anything without the right LCD so I'll dig up a 16 character two line LCD but hey live and learn all right it is a day later and I have successfully accomplished my goal let me show you so I found some connectors and I found an LCD screen that isn't the right size this is the original size of the LCD that that you would buy if you build this board and this is a one-liner as you saw so I got a two-liner and then I just made a patch cable that plugs into the header pins and it's fine got one screw holding it in place for now um, when I'm done I'll probably end up moving all this onto a separate system anyway so it's fine now uh, I got the motor connected, terminal blocks, and the calipers. That glue is great. Really worked well. That's that uh, hot glue. So I'll turn it on, and here we go. Open extruder, automatic mode. So if I start it, the motor's running really slow because I got it configured differently. So it's running really slow. This is what's on the calipers. This is all beta software just to make sure the thing works but yeah it is working these are the PID values and this is uh, what the PID loop is doing anyway still more work to do but yes indeed it is done and it does work now it's just a matter of testing working on the software oh and I forgot to tell you if you're wondering while I'm making this board why I'm making this board it's because I have this extruder I built many years ago, actually. And here's the winder for it. I designed and engineered and 3D printed this whole oscillator and all the parts on here. And here's the water cooler that I sent to Bob. And uh, yeah, now it's time to get this thing a little more automated. So hopefully this control board will do it. I think it will. All right, well, there you go. If you thought that was interesting, Go ahead and go over to my channel and check out Bob's video um, because I think you'll like it. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more of this type of stuff, I do all kinds of things. But if you want to see more stuff like this, go subscribe to my channel. Enjoy. Thanks, Bob, for letting me use your channel. Peace. All right, Russ, thanks for showing us what you've been doing over there at the RWG Research Channel. I've got links to his channel in the description, so be sure and go over there and check him out. If you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.